Serial killers always seems to fascinate us. I think it's more us trying to understand their personal agenda for their crimes. How they have the power to hold a town or city hostage. Terrorizing citizens, afraid of becoming their next victim. The unsolved cases, for me, are the interesting ones. Where no one was brought to book. Today, in real life, we take a look at one of those cases. The case, of the Zodiac Killer. Like. Comment. Subscribe. is a pathological uh, psycho uh, killer. There's no doubt about it. Solano County, December, 1968. In a car sits a couple. Doing what couples do best. Their names are, David Faraday, 17, and Betty Lou Jensen, 16. Suddenly, and without any warning, David Faraday, is shot in the head. Betty Lou, shocked, attempts to flee, but she doesn't make it far. She was gunned down, mere meters from the car. Betty Lou dies instantly, but David was still alive, but in a bad way. He was losing a lot of blood. Even after rushing him to hospital, David was sadly pronounced dead on arrival. Blue Rock Springs. A body lays on the ground. Covered in blood. In the car, a woman, lay slump over the steering wheel. She'd been shot multiple times, and is barely hanging on. Their names. Darlene Farron, 22, and Mike Mercho, 17. Darlene unfortunately dies. But Mike gets a second chance, and survives. Mike is questioned. He explains. They were sitting in the car, hanging out, chilling to the radio. They noticed a car pulling up behind them. Suspecting it to be the authorities, there was no need to panic. A male figure exits the vehicle. Holding a flashlight, he walks in their direction. Expecting a tap on the window, without warning, bullets starts flying through their car. He was trapped. There was no getting away. He leaps onto the back seat for cover, and that was when he saw Darlene repeatedly getting shot. Out of bullets, the man leaves. Returning moments later, he raises his gun, pointing it at Darlene, and shoots her two more times. He then points the gun at Mike, shooting him two more times, just to make sure. Napa, September, 1969. At a lake, a young couple was hanging out. A masked man appears, holding a gun in one hand, and a knife in another. After tying them up, the masked man attacks them stabbing the 22-year-old Cecilia Shepard, 10 times. Sadly, she didn't make it. She passed away due to her injuries. Brian Hartwell, the male victim, survived. And gave a description of their attacker. The man was approximately 5 feet 10 inches. He wore gloves, and a full mask. Carrying a gun in one hand, and a knife in the other also noticing that he had the sign of the Zodiac on display. The perpetrator left detectives a message, scribed on the side of a car door. Admitting to his crimes. San Francisco, October, 1969. Paul Stein, a cab driver, was instructed to stop at the corner of Washington and Cherry Street. Moments later, a shot rings out. 
In an instant, Paul Stein is dead. He was shot in the head. A young girl, watching from her window, noticed the crime unfold. Shortly after the gun shot, she saw the killer exit the cab. The man is seen wiping down the outside of the cab. He then proceeds down Cherry Street. Days later, the police gets a letter from the Zodiac. Just to prove that it was him, a piece of the cab driver's bloody shirt was also included with the letter. In his letter, he continues with his game, taunting and messing with the police. He writes, The San Francisco police could have caught me last night. If they had searched the park properly, instead of holding road races with the motorcycles, seeing who can make the most noise. He also says, School children make fine targets. I think I shall wipe out a school bus some morning, just shoot out the front tire, and then pick off the kitties as they come bouncing out. Months later, the 22nd of March 1970, a mother and her daughter, travels the highway, southeast of San Francisco. They noticed a vehicle, with the driver pointing for them to pull over. The Good Samaritan, gets out of his car, and advises the mother that they have tire issues, and offers to help. Not long after, it's fixed, and he allows the ladies to continue with their journey. A few meters down the road, the wheel pops off, and is seen rolling away. Acting all confused, he offers them a ride. With the mother and child sitting beside him, he turns off the main road, and ventures the back streets. Telling the mother over and over again, that he was going to kill them. He makes a wrong turn. And is forced to stop. Giving the mother an opportunity to escape. The mother leaps out with her baby. She heads for a field, and hides. After a quick search for the mother, the Zodiac leaves. A passing truck driver picks the mother and child up and takes them to the police station. At the police station, she sees a sketch of the man, that had just offered them a ride. A suspect was on the police radar. The police received a call, advising them to have a look at Arthur Lee Allen. Arthur Lee Allen was questioned by the police. His handwriting was analyzed. Fingerprints and even his palm print was compared. But every time the test cleared his name. The Zodiac, I believe, for some reason, knew he would never be caught. Many believe that Arthur Lee Allen was the Zodiac killer. What do you believe? Game over.